Gas Stu here. A uh, little bit of an outdoor video today. Um, a little while ago I did that video on wiring up a bilge pump. Uh, that sort of focused on just how the, the basic circuit goes for the fuse and the float switch and that sort of thing. Uh, today I just want to go into a little bit about installing that. I'm actually just looking at a, um, a float switch and a bilge pump here and although they're functioning electrically they're actually just not installed in a particular good way in the boat. So I just wanted to show you that um, and show you how I would, would put them in and how I'm going to change it to be just to make sure that they work a little better. So I'll show you what's currently happening here and then we'll swap it over and I'll show you that. Okay, so what's going on here is we've got a very similar um, circuit to the uh, one I showed you in the wiring diagram. Um, this one's actually got a little welded plate. So the first part to installing it is having something to attach it to. Uh, in an aluminium boat like this, you can't just uh, obviously screw it into the hull because it's a thin hull and you're going to go straight through. But you do want it down in the bilge. You can't, obviously can't uh, really attach it to a false floor. You want it to be right down in the bilge where it's going to get to the lowest point, which is generally, you know, the back of the boat near the keel. Uh, but the problem with this setup is when I got on this boat, the bilge pump was actually running. And I don't know how long it's been running for. And that's because the float switch is in deeper water than the pump itself. So it was in a situation where the float switch was up and staying up, but the pump itself wasn't actually pumping any water. So that can sit like that all day long and just flatten your battery. So what I'm going to do is disconnect both of these and swap it so the pump's in deeper water and the float switch is here. That means the float switch won't activate as, um, as early um, and so the boat will always probably have a little bit of water in the bilge but I think that's a lot better than having it uh, flatten it. Um, having the two in the same depth of water can be is obviously kind of ideal. Um, I wouldn't have them on opposite sides of any sort of um, a sort of a longitudinal member because uh, water can be trapped on one side and not the other. Once again, the float switch is sitting in water, the bilge pump's not, I'm just going to flatten your battery. Um, and then depending on how the boat sits in the water, having the uh, float switch forward or aft, aft might work because it's generally deeper a bit further aft as well. So they're both close to the centre line, lots of options, but all I guess I'm trying to say is just try and think about it so you don't open a situation exactly like this where the float switch is sitting in water that the pump's not able to pump out. So the other thing I'm going to do is swap this sort of traditional uh, mechanical float switch you saw just down um, with one of these sort of electronic float switches. Um, these I really like because they have no moving parts. Um, the other thing you'll probably have noticed is that um, there was quite a lot of that foam, styrofoam that's come out from the flotation in the hull and that can sort of get wedged underneath the mechanical ones and be another reason why it just wedges open and flattens the battery. Uh, so I'm actually going to be swapping this out for one of these um, and I'll show you. There's no real trick with these other than uh, they do have a specific way they have to go. Um, the other mechanical switches you can just put pretty much any wire on any side. Um, with this one you do actually have to have one to the uh, power, one to the uh, float switch. Um, and instead of lifting it to test it, the other trick with these, they've got these two little surface pads, so when there's water across both of these that come on, and you can test it by just putting your finger on both those, those points. So it's just a way of testing it rather than just lifting a mechanical float switch the way you would normally, you test it by putting your finger on those points, and the float switch should come on. If it doesn't do that, it's not wired up properly. So just starting to uh, solder this uh, first power lead for the new float switch, um, I don't want to go through this in detail because it's, it's no different to what we did in the wiring and bilge pump video. But um, the only thing I did want to say is um, whenever you are working on things like this in your boat, just make sure you get the power off. Uh, and also be aware that with um, bilge pumps, turning the battery off generally won't do it. Bilge pumps are designed to... Uh, that's a bit hot. Um, bilge pumps are designed to um, keep working even when the battery is switched off. This soldering iron's actually off at the moment now, it's just a bit of residual heat to close this heat shrink up a little bit. Yeah, that should last nicely. So I've just got to do a little cleaning up now, but this is the arrangement I've gone with now. A uh, little bit parallel, 
um, uh, sort of you know similar distance to the uh, centre line of the boat, um, and the float switch just a little bit more outboard, just a bit higher up. Um, testing this one, as I said, you just put your fingers on the two connectors here. I can reach them, and it'll start up if you hold it. So it's uh, testing the float switch is working, and. Um, now it's switching off rather than uh, the pump just sitting there pumping and pumping. So I'm just going to clean a bit of this uh, foam up and then um, tidy these wires and we'll be good to go. So thanks for watching. A bit of a short one today, which is probably a nice change. Um, I hope this sort of gave you a few uh, ideas just on mounting a bilge pump. Just having a little bit of thinking about uh, your plan before you start physically attaching it. Um, there's um, a lot of variety of boats out there and you know it can vary depending on whether it's got multiple bilge compartments all sorts of things but I think the main thing for me to take home message from this is just um, make sure that your bilge pump's not detecting water that your bilge pump can't reach that's sort of really what I was trying to fix here as well as put this new float switch in um, you know keeping a clean bilge is obviously important you can see there's a lot of stuff in there actually in fact I even found this I don't even know what it is rat maybe water rat bird don't know not good with animals um, so, you know, keeping the bilge clear of this sort of stuff um, will stop the float switch jamming open if it's mechanical and will stop the bilge pump clogging up as well. So that's probably another thing just to keep in mind. All right, well, thanks a lot. I uh, hope you got something out of this video. And um, if you did, I hope you choose to subscribe and I'll catch you next time. See ya.